Yes. who will present to us the fruitful outcomes of the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation. Sorry to keep you waiting. Minister Wan had a packed program today. He just finished the activities at the Great Hall of the People. Without further ado, I give the floor to Minister Wang Yi, and he will take two questions. Good evening, friends from the media. I'm sorry I kept you waiting for so long. I know you have worked very hard. Well, we should work hard, but we do thank you for your hard work. Welcome to the press conference of the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative put forward by President Xi Jinping. I know you have consistently followed the progress of Belt and Road and cooperation and enhanced people's understanding of and participation in this important initiative. So in behalf of the Chinese government, I sincerely thank all of you for your hard work. Over the past 10 years, Belt and Road Cooperation has made historic achievements benefiting people from over 150 countries, set out a path of cooperation, opportunities, and prosperity that leads to common development. It has become a most popular international public good and the largest international cooperation platform. The theme of this year's BRF is high quality belt and road cooperation together for common development and prosperity. Representatives from over 150 countries and 41 international organizations have come to Beijing to attend the forum. Over 10,000 participants have registered with the forum. This is indeed a grand gathering. And they once again showcased the enormous appeal and global influence of Belt and Road Cooperation. President Xi Jinping delivered a keynote speech at the opening ceremony of the forum. He reviewed the progress over the past 10 years and took stock of the successful experience. He emphasized that Belt and Road Cooperation is on the right side of history, meets the logic of progress of our times, and follows the right path. He announced eight major steps China will take to support high-quality Belt and Road Cooperation, identifying new directions, opening up new vistas, and creating new momentum for Belt and Road Cooperation. President Xi has also held talks and meetings with all the foreign leaders participating in the forum, and there will be more talks and meetings to come. And they have also reached important common understandings on cooperation. During the BRF, we convened three high-level forums on digital economy, connectivity, and green development, respectively. We also held six thematic forums on trade connectivity, people-to-people -people bonds, think tank exchanges, plain silk road, subnational cooperation and maritime cooperation, as well as a CEO conference. We have completed all the agenda. The forum has been a full success. Parties all agree that this forum is yet another milestone in the process of Belt and Road Cooperation. It is a conference of unity that further consolidated the consensus on Belt and Road Cooperation. It is a conference of win-win that further enriched the outcomes of Belt and Road Cooperation. It is also a conference of development that further outlined the bright future of Belt and Road Cooperation. The BIF has released the Chair's statement, which gave an overview of the important common understandings and outcomes produced at the forum. Well, in light of the progress made at this forum, I'd like to emphasize four points. First, the most
clear signals from this forum is unity, cooperation, openness, and win-win. Although today's world is confronted with a multitude of crises and challenges, Cold War mentality and confrontation between different camps have resurfaced. The friends from different countries attending the CSBIF have made it very clear that we have all come for friendship, for cooperation, and for development. President Xi Jinping pointed out in his keynote speech that humanity is a community with a shared future. We win cooperation is the sure way to success in launching major initiatives that benefit everyone. The Silk Road spirit of peace, cooperation, openness, inclusiveness, and mutual learning is the most important source of strength guiding Belt and Road cooperation. The forum in Beijing has sent a clear and explicit message to the world that is, we want unity, not division, cooperation, not confrontation, openness, not isolation, win-win, not zero-sum. Amidst the transformation I've seen in a century, Belt and Road Cooperation will always bring stability and positive energy to the world. Second, the most important command standing established at this forum is to launch a new stage of high-quality Belt and Road Cooperation. President Xi Jinping pointed out that China will work with all parties to deepen Belt and Road partnership and bring our cooperation into a new stage of high-quality development which has received positive response and support from all parties. At the high-level forum on connectivity, participants supported efforts to further boost connectivity, build high-quality, sustainable, and resilient infrastructure, enhance cooperation in transportation, energy, resources, and irrigation, increase institutional connectivity, and build an open-world economy. At the high-level forum on digital economy, participants called for expedited efforts toward a digital Silk Road, fostering an open, fair, just, and non-discriminatory environment for digital development, improving information infrastructure, promoting deep integration of digital technologies and the real economy, and advancing the healthy, orderly, and secure development of AI. To that end, China has put forward the Global Initiative for AI Governance, which has drawn great attention. At the high-level forum on Green Silk Road, participants highlighted the need to further the Green Silk Road, meet the climate challenges together, step up cooperation on biodiversity protection and pollution treatment, build investment and financing partnerships for green development and empower green development. At the thematic forums, there is extensive expectation for advancing practical cooperation, boosting trade and investment, liberalization and facilitation, improving business environment, supporting the blue economy, building the clean silk road, and carrying out a variety of cultural educational, technological, tourism, health, and sports activities, and carry out exchanges at the sub-national level. Third, the most ambitious vision proposed at this forum is joining hands for global modernization. Realizing modernization is a shared aspiration and the right of all peoples. Belt and Road Cooperation has built an open platform for common development and helped many developing countries to take faster strides towards modernization. At this forum, President Xi Jinping proposed for the first time that all countries need to join hands to pursue global modernization for peace and development, mutually beneficial cooperation to bring prosperity for all. 
This ambitious vision is consistent with China's vision of building a community with a shared future for mankind and has pointed out the direction forward for high-quality Belt and Road cooperation. Over 7 billion people all over the world will join hands for modernization. This will be the most magnificent view in human history. President Xi pointed out that what China pursues is not modernization only for itself, but it hopes to realize modernization together with all countries, including developing countries. In his speech at the opening ceremony, President Xi announced that China will further expand market access and deepen reform in areas including state-owned enterprises, digital economy, intellectual property, and government procurement. We will enter into free trade agreements and investment protection treaties with more countries. The potential of the Chinese market as the largest in the world will continue to be released. Chinese financial institutions will set up a new RMB financing window and support BRI projects based on well-informed studies. China will continue to promote local employment through cooperation projects and carry out 1,000 small-scale livelihood assistance projects. We believe that as these measures materialize, they will provide stronger boost to global modernization and greater space for common development. The defining feature of this forum is that it is action-oriented, efficient, and pragmatic. Belt and Road cooperation means that we need to build consensus for cooperation, but more importantly, we need to take concrete actions. The eight major steps announced by President Xi include building a multi-dimensional Belt and Road Connectivity work Network, promoting green development and advancing scientific and technological innovation. And they also include project-based measures of carrying out practical cooperation, supporting people-to-people -people exchanges, and strengthening institutional building for international Belt and Road cooperation. During the forum, 458 outcomes were reached. Each and every one of them is concrete. The number far exceeds that of the second Belt and Road Forum, and they include cooperation initiative and arrangement, including Beijing Initiative for Deepening Cooperation on Connectivity, Beijing Initiative for Belt and Road Green Development, Beijing Initiative for Belt and Road Digital Economy International Cooperation, and uh, also Green Development Investment and Financing Partnership, as well as high-level principles on Belt and Road Integrity Building. They also include specific targets, including providing 100,000 training opportunities for partner countries by 2030 and increase the number of joint labs to 100. Commercial agreements worth $97.2 billion have been concluded at the CEO conference. This can help countries create more jobs and growth. The forum also decided to establish a secretariat of the forum, which will play an important role for mechanism building and project implementation. All these tangible outcomes is a vote of support and confidence from participating parties. Belt and Road Cooperation is not about talking to talk, but walking the walk, and it will continue to provide endless for global economic growth and common development. If we pick woods together, the flame will be high. And the success of this forum once again proves that the direction of Belt and Road cooperation is right. 
and countries are firmly confident about Belt and Road Cooperation. And high quality development of Belt and Road Cooperation enjoys a bright future. This forum also testifies that peaceful development, when win win cooperation, is a prevailing trend and what people aspire for. Cold War. Confrontation and decoupling go against the trend of history and is no way out. Standing at the new historical starting point, we will work with all parties to carry forward the Silk Road spirit and embark on a new journey of high-quality Belt and Road cooperation and embrace a brighter future toward modernization together with all countries. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor is open to questions. Thank you. Good evening. The Belt and Road Initiative has drawn much international attention to infrastructure and connectivity. In recent years, other countries have come up with a range of initiatives and cooperation mechanisms in these areas. How does China see the relations between the BRI and other initiatives and mechanisms? Thank you. This is a very interesting question. That is an interesting question. I'd love to use this opportunity to share with you our views and suggestions. Infrastructure is indispensable for promoting economic growth and improving people's lives. To get rich, one must first build roads. This is what the ordinary Chinese often say. It is as simple as it is wise. The focus of Belt and Road Cooperation is connectivity, that is to extend from physical connectivity to institutional connectivity and then to heart-to-heart -to -heart connectivity. To accelerate infrastructure development is the pressing need of many developing countries. It also reflects the common wish of the international community. That is also why the BI is increasingly welcomed and appreciated by more and more countries. And that is the lifeline of the Belt and Road Cooperation. Indeed, in recent years, some countries have drawn on or even copied what China did. They have also introduced some connectivity initiatives. And what I want to point out is that China's Belt and Road is an open platform. We welcome the participation of all parties at any time. In the meantime, we hope that other countries' connectivity initiatives could also stay open rather than being a closed small circle. China is willing to build synergy with all connectivity initiatives and jointly discuss possible cooperation that could benefit developing countries. For example, we could cooperate with the EU's global gateway leverage our respective strengths and build synergy. Together, we could help developing countries accelerate infrastructure development. Well, some people claim that America's partnership for global infrastructure and investment for PGII is targeted against China's Belt and Road. Well, I believe this is yet another example of trying to politicize an economic issue. This is short-sighted and negative, and it will not be recognized by the international community. One cannot politicize everything or act like they have political paranoia. Some say that these two initiatives can compete. Well, we are ready to address this squarely. Of course, competition should not be about negating each other, but to help each other be better. Maybe we could have a competition globally about who can build more roads, railways, and bridges for developing countries, who can build more schools, hospitals, and sports stadiums for the ordinary people in low-income countries. We have the confidence that we are able to deliver. Thank you.
Thank you, Director Wang. The second question, please. Uh, we please Ten年间，习近平主席在哈萨克斯坦提出攻坚四周之路紧急的呃十年来一带一路呃修复的国内的经济，呃十年来一带一路呃修复的国内的经济，呃十年来一带一路呃修复的国内的经济，呃十年来
The Belt and Road Corporation in the new stage will bring more new opportunities for global economy and bring more good news for global situation. In the interest of time, if you have any questions today, please raise your hand. If there are further questions, please raise them at the MFA daily conferences. Thank you.